Again, let's not keep ground zero waiting. Ground zero is waiting for you to populate this platform for me to bring you the presentation. So please, as you join, go ahead and do that. Go ahead, hit your share button. Uh, let me bring you the presentation. In the next 10 minutes, I will bring you the presentation in the next 10 minutes, but you have to hit on hitting that share button. I got very, very, very uh, interesting development that I will be bringing to you today in this presentation. Something good is happening. Not as good as, as I would expect. Not as good as changing anything. But at least what is happening is that we are beginning to see the world is beginning to listen to us. The world is beginning to show some concern. And I will break that news right here, right now. Claire Tus in Jilema, see you sir, watching from Deanwood Station. Karine Benny, hey Secretary Chris, uh, remember what I told you in Asen. You are one of the persons still giving us, still giving us courage. Thank you, Benny. I don't remember your face, though. I appreciate your words. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Etiba Lord Nelson, watching from Boya. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. In them festus, I also see you. We have nine minutes to go to the presentation. So please keep on hitting your share button. Lexus Mbo says from Abed Mukong Avenue that is in the federal capital in Boya. Thank you sir for joining. I hope you are all safe there today. I also see Le Prince. I see Valerie Sutton. He says uh, I also see Urban Moses Obi from Boya. I said Teal Boya. You are absolutely correct. I like to read this comment so that our people out there especially those watching by way of television can tell what you are thinking and how you are feeling as far as our revolution is concerned. So please keep the comments coming. I will read those that I can. Remember, you have to hit, keep, continue hitting the share button. Abdu Maikano, I see you. He says, Chris, Chiroma must be watching this broadcast. He has no choice. He has to. Thank you. Thank you, Abdu. I'm Bumo Charles. I see you, sir. Hi, Secretary Chris. Greetings from Oslo. Thank you, Charles. I appreciate it. Valentine in Zeng. Say, I'm about to rise and fall no more. You are right, sir. You are correct. Humble King says, I see also, I don't want to call the name, Lucas with a fake profile. Okay. That is good. Uh, Mami Omega, I mentioned you before. Steven Ngakam, I mentioned you. Lexi Y, I see you watching from Kansas City. I also see Walton Kenneth watching from the Netherlands. Please grow the number. Six minutes to go. I'm counting down to the last minute to bring you this presentation. So please, you are just joining i got some very, very, very interesting news that I bring for you today. You want to get to that news? Hit your share button. Hit your share button. And please, once more, let me know that the, that the volume, the audio quality is good enough. Thank you. Uh, I will teach you, Ashley Aeyong, I see you, sir. He say hi, Mr. Chris Anu, our strength in the struggle. Thank you for the compliment. compliment. Tanyi Roland, I see you. We beg for amnesty for General Aroke. He will get it. I can promise you. I don't know when, but I can promise you General Aroke will get amnesty. What we are doing, what the ASC and the Boyo Council, they are doing is called discipline. And we want every general, every fighter on ground zero to know that Nobody, nobody is beyond discipline. I think a day ago we heard a, an audio where one of so-called general on the ground was calling and demanding money. That is not what this revolution is about. This revolution is about protecting our people. 
We are giving what some generals and some fighters are doing. They are giving La Republic to Cameroon, Paul Atanganji's armies, the leeway to go around cutting people's fingers and then they will turn around and accuse us of doing that. When we see people who are wayward in this struggle, no matter what you have done, discipline will be brought in, not to kill you, but to make sure that uh, it serves as an example for others who may want to do the same thing. We must protect our own. We must protect our own. No extortions, no kidnappings, no arrests, no killings, not from our own camp, not from Ambazonians. We can understand when Paul Atang and his troops do that, when the Ekema Patrick army does that, when people like Njume, Njume Wu Franklin, when they do that, but it must not come from Amber Restoration Forces or any other force in that matter. We don't care what group you belong to. If you are caught intimidating, extorting, killing, or wounding any Ambazonian on Ground Zero, you will be disciplined. I can assure you that. But all, let me also add, General R.K. will regain his freedom. You can rest assured. Please hit the share button. Four minutes to go until I come to you with a representation. I see Julius a day. Good day from the custodian. Yeah, I know you, sir. Thanks for joining. I also see Inquen Boy from Yasso. So, watching from Yasso. So, thank you, please. I see Jean Jules Kafu. Good morning from Yaonde. Thank you, sir. Is it morning in Yaoundé already? That is the colonial capital. Uh, Amber Landa in Zeal. I see you, sir. Secretary Chris, you be strong man. Oh. Thank you for that. I see Castro Labisterano. I met you finally in uh, Minnesota a week ago. Was it Minnesota? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Nonjang Carlos, I see you, sir. Long live the interim government. Thank you. I see also Christy 80. Hello, Chris. We we'll love you with this wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. I see Titi watching from Ground Zero in Santa. Wow. I love that. Mola Faco. Great job, Secretary Chris. Fire on. Thank you, sir. Christian Gebre from Douala, uh, Colonial Economic Capital. Amber Ethics, I see you, sir. Thumbs up, say IG. That is awesome. Hannah Abia, I see you. Moma Armstrong Tatapon, thank you for joining. Banky Thomas, I see you. Solomon Paul, thank you also for watching from Dubai. Benson, Ab Benson Abrahaminos, that's a lot of a long name there. Uh, Amber Ethics, I mentioned you. Nganu George Ingwa, he said, audio is perfect. Great to hear that. Thank you. The volume is good. That's free boy, free boy. Good to see you. Uh, in Salai Diodone, I see also, he says, killing is not allowed. You are correct, sir. We will never tolerate any killing by our Amber boys, no matter what camp they belong to. You kill from any camp, I can assure you, we will come after you with all the might and strength of this interim government and you will be brought to discipline. Let me also add that the practice where so many uh, Amber boys taking videos of themselves, pictures of themselves and putting out in the social media, we cannot emphasize enough that they are working against your own security. You are exposing yourself to danger. What the Republic of Cameroon is doing right now is using drones, drones, using the videos, the information you have in the videos and the pictures to detect precisely where you are in your community. We are advising, we have advised again and again that we should stop putting out these videos unless unless they are really, really necessary. It is your own safety, sirs, we are talking about. It is not mine. It is not somebody else. It is your own safety. We want to get to Boya with you. We don't want you to fight and die 
before we get to Boya. So please stop putting out these videos and photos unless they are really, really necessary. Thank you for getting that. Two minutes to go before I bring you the presentation. I see David M. Powell. He says, volume is good. Thank you, sir. Emma Mbaku, I also see you, sir. He says, sir, I have a report from Meme of a similar incident of some groups in Bole Bakundu extortion. If you can have their number, have the contact of the boss of the group, let us have their group, their number, please. Because the only way we can reach to them to warn them is if we have some contact to those groups. Any group or any any general you find extorting, if you can locate their number and their contact, forward it to the interim government. Will we make sure we reach out to them? And should we reach out to them and they refuse to take instructions or to listen? They will be picked up. They will be, they will be arrested and disciplined. If it means locking them up indefinitely, that will be done. Discipline must be brought on ground zero among the forces because there are other forces on the ground that are trying to mess up the work that you are doing. You cannot be there fighting for our freedom and our independence and a few people are trying to destroy the good work, the good job that you are doing out there. So you got information of any extortion, any group kidnapping people, forward it to us. If we get to them, you can rest assured we will discipline them if we arrest them. All right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, at this moment, I would like to uh, bring you the presentation uh, proper. I want to urge you to continue to hit the share button as I bring this presentation to you. Again, it is a privilege for me to bring this to you and I do not bring you entertainment, I bring you information for the revolution. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Amazonians. <coughs> the attention of the interim government has been drawn to a meeting tomorrow Tuesday, November the 13th, between the Diplomatic Corps of the European Union and Cardinal Toomey, Dr. Simon Munzo, Ellie Smith and others that we do not yet know. We have learned that the European Union is taking steps to finding lasting solutions to the war. And so in view of your AAC3 plan for Boya later this month, the diplomatic meeting tomorrow, Tuesday, is meant to iron out positions of the Federalists, represented by those I have just mentioned. We have also learned that as I speak, there is a United Nations delegation in Boya sampling the political atmosphere in view of the Tumi Munzu led AAC3. The interim government applauds the effort of the European Union to delve into the conflict to sort out practical and lasting solutions. Since the beginning of this war, the EU, particularly Germany, have proven through advocacy against it that they care about the massacres and barbaric treatment that we Ambazonians have had to be subjected to under Paul Beer. We are very grateful. Having said that, the interim government has for over the duration of this conflict made its position on any form of negotiations or dialogue known especially as concerns the Cardinal Tumi and Munzu's AAC3. The organizers of AAC3, Tumi, Munzu, Bala, Ili Smith, Reverend Samuel and the Imams, have made it very clear that what they intend or what they want 
is a one and indivisible Cameroon where federalism is a form of state. They hope to use their AAC3 to push that agenda on the majority of Southern Cameroonians who have since moved away from the belief that a federal Cameroon can still serve us. For the interim government, the Cardinal and his team are essentially trying to force their opinion on all Lambazonians who want a free country of their own. We say no to it. The interim government has previously given certain conditions under which such a meeting can hold. First, take off federalism from the table. Second, release our president and his cabinet. Third, pull out the military from our streets and call the meeting in a neutral location where the security of interim government representatives is assured. So far, none of these conditions have been met and they have now gone ahead to schedule the conference for the 21st through the 22nd of this month, November. We are reiterating our previous position that the previous posi position that banned the meeting holding anywhere in the southern Cameroon, Ambazonia. Fellow Ambazonians, the interim government is declaring a complete shutdown of our territory for five days with a ghost town beginning November the 19th through to, the, to November the 23rd. Not even an end shall be allowed movement within those days. No entry in and out of Ambazonia and no interurban movement shall be tolerated. Every office and business shall remain shut down. No taxi or Okada shall move. Any vehicle that moves shall be considered enemy vehicle and shall face the consequences. Our, our generals and the restoration forces have been put on the alert and you shall be hearing from them soon. They shall enforce this order to the later. We are not, again, we are not going to allow cronies, people who have spent their careers answering yes sir to Paul Beer to force their will on all of us. If Cardinal Toomey, Dr. Munzu, Eli Smith, Bala in orders, truly think that we are divided on this restoration question, what they should be doing is persuading the European Union to call or sponsor a referendum on the matter, not some conference that not even Paul Beer is interested in. Paul Beer made it very, very, very clear only last week that what he wants is decentralization. The same decentralization that has failed for all these years. He added that he will crush us to do it. Why are Tumi and Munzu begging so hard for this federation? Do they really love French Cameroon this much to a free and independent Southern Cameroon, Zambazonia? Unfortunately for them, as Dr. Muzu himself pronounced in 1994 in Bermuda's AAC2, the time of federation is gone. Ours is a free Ambazonia, or we fight like others have fought. To gain their independence. It is that simple. And now on the laying down of our arms, as requested by Paul Beer, at Paul Beer's fraudulent inauguration last week, he issued an ultimatum demanding that our restoration forces lay down their arms and give up defending our people, our territory, and our independence. We consider this just one of those is bully tactics that won't work. 
I would like to respond particularly to Paul Beer and those who back him why our arms are not about being laid down any moment soon. Ambazonians did not choose war. It was brought unto us. When our lawyers and teachers took to the public squares in 2016 protesting what then was the assimilation and annihilation of our common culture and heritage, all they asked for were reforms. Change. Simple change. But in the state of change, in the state of reforms, they were arrested. They were tortured. And some of them sent to detention centers in French Cameroon. The cases of Dr. Fontem Neva, Barista Agobala, Mancho BBC, Pen Terence, and many, many others still remain very fresh in our minds. Mr. B.S. Cronies called us names for them who were mere two cubes of sugar, incapable of challenging or facing or standing up to almighty La Republic du Cameroon. However, when Paul B. has smelled our strength and realized that the two cubes of sugar would not dis won't dissolve, instead of proffering real and lasting solutions to the crisis, as usual, he chose to do window dressing in the name of reforms. He created the so-called National Bilingualism and Multiculturalism Commission. Today, as I speak to you, that commission is more than a year old, <clears throat> and the only thing, the only thing it has done is hold two meetings, one in Boya and the other in Bamenda. The results from the meetings an empty white piece of paper that Mafani Musonge handed over to Paul Beer. Among other things that Mr. Beer promised or offered as part of appeasement towards resolving the crisis were the creation of a second Supreme Court to be located in Yaoundé based on our common law tradition. Of course, these two has remained a mere announcement. <clears throat> Window dressing. Let's not forget, Bia also promised withdrawing French Cameroon judges, magistrates, and clerks from all courtrooms in our territory. He equally promised withdrawing their French teachers from our classrooms so that only pure Anglo-Saxon education is practiced in our territory. Please answer for yourself. Have the French procurers, judges, and clerks been withdrawn from our courts, from our territory? As I speak to you today, ladies and gentlemen, we still have French-speaking magistrates, judges, and clerks presiding over in exclusively common law jurisdictions in Ambazonia. Nothing, nothing that Bia said was done. And nothing, I mean nothing, nothing has changed since this war began. The very French Cameroon teachers Paul Bia promised to take out of our classrooms are still there. They teach our children in French because they detest our way of life. This is the person some now want us to surrender to. How can that be possible? Mr. Bia did not fulfill any of his own promises up to this day. Promises that he hoped would resolve this conflict. Instead, what he chose to do was to declare war on us on November 30th, 2017. At that declaration, he no longer referred to us as his citizens. He was correct. He referred to us as terrorists. Terrorism must be crushed. He was wrong. 
He equated us to with Boko Haram and hoped that in less than no time would have finished with us as a people. But once he couldn't crush us, he thought that conspiring with Nigeria to abduct our leaders would do the trick. He was equally mistaken. Our leaders have, as of this moment, languished in his custody for almost a year. But our resolve, our resilience and courage remains unshakable. The engine of the revolution still moves on. The international community from the Commonwealth of Nations, the European Union, the African Union, the British and the Americans have time and again asked Mr. Beer to pursue inclusive dialogue that looks into the root causes of the conflict and resolve it. But no, for two years and counting, Paul Beer has refused to listen. He has refused to summon such an, initial, an inclusive dialogue forum. What Mr. Beer wants is brute force. He believes in brute force because he cannot win this case against us at any low cost. They know that before the United Nations, he cannot win the case against a free and an independent Southern Cameroon and Bazonia. In the case of a referendum, Mr. Bien knows he cannot win one or they cannot win one. The dilemma for Mr. Paul Beer and his allies in French Cameroon is that they are not going to win even this war, this brute force war either. That is their dilemma. Mr. Beer wants us to lay down our arms? Really? Who does he think that he is to Ambazonians? If he has forgotten, I like to remind him that he is not our president. We never participated in his fraudulent election. We are not Cameroonians either. We are Ambazonians. Cameroonians are the ones carrying the green, red, yellow flag, holding rallies and protesting Paul Beer's election fraud. No Ambazonian is on the street protesting any elections. We have not protested because he is not our leader. He isn't our president. Our president is Sisiko Julius Ayuktabe. He is the only one, the only one, the only person who can ask and who has the authority to ask that we lay down our arms until he does forget about it. A little history lesson to Mr. Paul Beer and his cronies. Mr. Beer, sir, you shouldn't forget that the war in Sudan, in the Sudans, lasted for over 20 years, sir. Yes, Sudanese soldiers crossed the southern Sudanese like cockroaches. They killed hundreds of thousands of southern Sudanese. But the good news is, the southern Sudanese are a free people, an independent country today. Ethiopia did the same thing to Eritrea. But you know what? Like the Southern Sudanese, Eritrea is a free and independent nation today. The white minority in South Africa thought that imprisoning Nelson Mandela and crushing black resistance, they were going to have appetite prevail. Thank God, the blacks stood their grounds in spite of the killings. There was a time in the history of this great country called the United States of America, when blacks were told they can never sit on same tables with whites, that they could not, that they could not attain same schools with whites. Blacks were told that they couldn't use same shops with whites, that they were inferior to whites. They were beaten and dragged on the streets of Mississippi, Alabama, Atlanta, Georgia, among others. 
Many of them were shot and killed for from the bar from their barracks while they ran away from their attackers. But those who did not fall, those who succeeded to run and live through another day, live to still come back to resist and to fight. They fought harder and harder every day, never giving up. In spite of the excruciating agony being inflicted upon them. Why did they do this? What was their motivation? They saw a dream. They saw in that dream that one day, one day, sons and daughters of former white of former white slave owners shall one day sit on same tables with them, same schools, same hospitals, same supermarkets, same colleges, with sons and daughters of former slaves. Fellow Ambazonians, we have seen a dream like the Americans, black Americans, and the dream is that one of these days, French Cameroon shall actually be referring to us as neighbors. We have a dream that one of these days, our children shall cease from being false to learn the colonial language of French. We have a dream that one of these days, we shall be able to walk the streets of Boya and Bamenda free from the harassment of gendarmes. We have a dream that one of these days, we shall never, never have any more reason to cross the Mongol to work and to pay taxes. We have a dream that the sovereignty that was stolen from us in 1961 will soon, soon, soon be ours once more. We have a dream. We have a dream that one of these days our court shall be filled with common law judges. Judges who will speak our language and who have been schooled in common law. These are the reasons for which we will not, we will not and cannot by any means, for any reasons, lay down our arms. Like the Eritreans, the Southern Sudanese, black South Africans and black slaves in America, we have a date with history. We must pay the price. The price is perseverance. The price is courage. No, Mr. Beer, our guns can only grow. They can only multiply. And if you should seal all the borders between us and wherever our supply comes from, let me assure you, sir, that God will drop us guns and bullets from heaven. You have burned down our towns and villages, killed both adults and children. Men and women in their sleep, you kill them. You have forced hundreds of thousands into the bushes, and other hundreds of thousands to live as refugees in Nigeria. And many more live in your prison dungeons. Those your soldiers have not killed, their fingers have been cut off. They broke into homes and killed both parents and their children. Even the child was yesterday fried, I mean fried, fried, I mean fried, like pork meat, alive. Mr. Beer, what are you going to do that you haven't done already? Or let me put it this way, what are we left to see, sir, that we have not already seen? What we have already seen and experienced is enough to embolden us to go for more guns instead of laying them down. Since you have refused negotiations, growing our armament is the only option with God, sir. The only day we will lay down our arms is the day our anthem is sung in our flag permanently raised in Boya, the capital of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. And now to our restoration forces. 
on behalf of the interim government, I like to once more salute your courage and bravery. All of you have made Ambazonians very proud, very, very proud indeed. But let me assure you, this war is only just about starting. Mr. Beer campaign on crushing you like chickens. And he has started already pushing machine guns into our territory. This calls for new tactics within your realms. It calls for bravery and resilience. Our appeal to you, the appeal of the interim government to you, is to strike only when it is necessary. And when you strike, make sure the most harm is inflicted upon the enemy. This is the moment for targeted damage. Any machine gun moved by La Republic du Cameroon into our territory is a violation of our sovereignty and territorial integrity. The machines plus those that operate them must not be allowed to, re to return to French Cameroon in one piece. Never. Besides, there should be absolutely no reason, no reason why by January we should still be having French Cameroon divisional officers, governors, and their invading soldiers in our territory. Every measure must be taken beginning now to stop the, exp the exportation of food to French Cameroon from our territory. Timber, rubber, petroleum, palm oil, bananas must be systematically prevented from crossing the Mongo into French Cameroon. Brasserie products should be stopped from our market. Confiscate them, confiscate them when you find them. Bars and beer parlors still selling brasserie products should be worn and given reasonable time to finish their stock. The government delegates must go and taxes to any French Cameroon council or city council should cease from being paid. We have to squeeze them so hard, so hard that their economy becomes good for nothing. It is the second front of this war. Until Paul Bia withdraws his terrorist soldiers and calls for a trust there shall be no turning back. Under the local government by local government or amber peace plan that the interim government is currently putting in place, all your supplies, I'm talking of our restoration forces, shall be made. Be prepared for the task that lies ahead. All Ambazonians in the diaspora are called upon to quickly identify with their local government groups and join to contribute resources for the defense of their local government areas and counties. Fellow Ambazonians, we at the interim government are very much aware of the calculated and relentless efforts out there, both from within and without, to cast to, to castigate this interim government are slow, inefficient, and incompetent. There are detractors and saboteurs who sit on the fringes and plot failure for the interim government. They hope that once the interim government fails, that they will just swing in like wolves to take over and maybe kill their way to Boya. I must tell you that this interim government hasn't been perfect. None of us here was ready for this situation. We have been learning on the job from day number one. And I must assure you that we are learning and making progress. Some would want you to believe that the interim government has no plan, has no roadmap. They say the interim government has failed when it comes to diplomacy. Who truly wants this interim government to publish its, its, its roadmap and put its diplomacy 
is, is the promise of pursuit on the social media. I hope none. Things may be looking slow and gleam, but let me assure you that there is strategic planning in the background. There is work being done from the background. This war will not be a one, this war will not be won overnight. It is not a walk in the park. We must give ourselves time to plan and time to execute. Do not take moments of inaction for moments of no vision. Stay clear of social media walls if you must remain focused to win the war. The walls want you to believe that everything the interim government is wrong, that the interim government is corrupt, that the pastors are terrible and should have no business leading a revolution, that my trip to Boya was a fraud, that local government by local government is tribalism, that the interim government want to kill, Ken, want to kill General Aroke. You can name the rest. All I say to you here today, especially on Ground Zero and the diaspora is to remain focused, identify your local government area, make your contributions. As for here at the interim government, we will remain focused and steadfast. We will work with honest and sincere Ambazonians who have the revolution at heart. Those that do not, they can shout on the top of their lungs, we will not be moved and we will do the work of a government thank you for watching god bless you god bless the southern cameroons and bazonia and remember we must live free or die fighting